Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand, forex and gold fundamental and technical analysis. If it's your first time watching, a warm welcome to you and if you're returning an equally warm welcome to you. And before we get started, I would just like to ask if you could press that like button, subscribe and also share with your fellow colleagues on other social platforms like Facebook. Um, as it would really help the uh, YouTube algorithm and uh, I guess our Trading 180 process is to really apply our fundamental analysis to establish directional bias and then apply technical analysis strategies, you know, supply and demand um, strategies to time trade entries, risk management and establish profit targets. So we use a combination of fundamentals and risk um sentiment analysis alongside technical analysis to really determine and pick the best forex pairs as well as determine trade direction in the medium to long term and try to you know get them in the short term as well but generally if you can um uh predict uh, and forecast uh price in the medium to long term then the short term will work itself out eventually anyways let's get into uh this week's uh, fundamental analysis uh, week ahead summary and uh the war between russia and ukraine has taken almost all markets attentions uh, sorry attention and there is little hope that next week will bring any peaceful solution to the conflict so things are escalating a little bit on the macro side the u.s federal reserve um, and Bank of England are set to hike interest rates. Other important data releases include US retail sales, Germany, uh, ZEW uh, economic sentiment index, labor, UK labor indicators, and China industrial production. So uh, just a little bit more detail, I guess, from trading economics, you can go to tradingeconomics.com. It's my uh, go, one of my go-to uh, sites. And um, in the US, the Fed is expected to deliver a quarter point rate hike on Wednesday, which should be the first increase in the Fed's funds rate since 2018. Investors will keep a close eye on fresh economic and interest rate projections and any comments on the central bank plans for its nearly $9 trillion balance sheet. Any guidance on the inflation and growth outlook will be scrutinized at a time uh, um, at a time commodity prices remain elevated due to Russian sanctions and uh, the uncertainty over the war uh, in Ukraine lingers. So um, there's that as well. And uh, really, that's, that's really the fundamental analysis behind it, right? Is all roads lead back to, you know, GDP and inflation as to what a central bank will do. Um, so elsewhere in America, inflation rate and retail sales for Canada. Yeah, so that's going to be uh, watched. Uh, we don't really focus on Brazil or Chile. In the United Kingdom, the Bank of England is expected to hike interest rates for the third straight meeting by 25 basis points to 0.75%, bringing borrowing costs to pre-pandemic levels, aiming to curb inflation currently running at 30-year highs. I think the US is 40-year highs uh, of 5.5%. Before the war in Ukraine, the Bank of England had forecast inflation to peak at a 30-year high of 7.25% in April, well above their 2% target when uh, energy bills and taxes are due to go up. On the data front, the UK unemployment rate and uh, in the three months to January is set, so that's the quarterly uh, unemployment rate, which is always uh, worth watching as it's uh, um, uh, a, an economic indicator for GDP. Um, in the three months to January is set to fall to its lowest. So that's generally good news when unemployment falls, that's great news, employment rises, uh, great news, right? Um, and wage growth is seen accelerating. And then in Europe, uh, German investor morale is expected to plunge to its lowest in two years when COVID-19 hit, uh, hurt by Russia-Ukraine conflict and mounting inflationary pressures. So uh, other key economic indicators include Eurozone final inflation data, industrial activity, balance of trade, and fourth quarter wage growth. All right, so there's lots of... Um, um, 
data coming out for the uh, for Europe. Um, it will also be a busy week for Japan with external trade figures, industrial production, private sector machinery orders, and inflation rate reading. I think that's the most important thing before the Bank of Japan meets on Friday. The central bank is widely expected to leave monetary policy unchanged amid a record beating rise in wholesale prices as consumer price inflation remained well above its 2% target. Again, I talk about this all the time on my channel. Um, and I've got many different fundamental webinars talking about and explaining, you know, the impact of inflation, why central banks have, uh, um, well, they, they have to meet their central bank target of, um, sorry, their inflation target of 2% where it's mandated, right? So if inflation starts to go higher, central banks generally have to hike rates to uh, and, and appreciate their currency to try to bring inflation down. Uh, also, the Bank of Japan should downgrade its economic assessment due to the worst and expected impact of impact sorry of um, uh, the Omicron variant in consumption and the war in Ukraine. So, again, that's the reason why they're keeping uh, potentially uh, um, uh, interest rates on on hold, right? Leaving monetary policy unchanged. Yeah. So because um, uh, the um, economy has to be able to support. An interest rate hike so yeah some interesting uh, uh, fundamental analysis here if you, you know really know what you're looking at then you and understand what's going on here then um, that is a brilliant information and we get into I guess some, uh, some more news as well but let's uh, I guess get into some of the technicals and a little bit more fundamentals to, to go alongside that and starting off on the dollar index and the US dollar index it's just a measure of dollar strength against the major currencies like the uh, euro, the yen and the pound. And uh, last week's analysis, um, I was looking for a pullback to a demand zone. Unfortunately, just didn't get any, right? I've been saying buy the dollar for uh, for, for a good uh, year or so. And you can see pretty much the uh, what's been happening, right? Just higher and higher uh, as we've been going along. Um, so... Yep, just really waiting for a pullback. Now, uh, a lot of traders will say things like, oh, well, should I buy, uh, you know, once they start hiking? No, the money's been made, right? The money has been made. And, I, and I'm not telling that you telling you that you shouldn't buy. It depends on what your strategy is. But if you're following along with um, with uh, trading 180 and supply and demand zones, you have to wait for a pullback, right? It's just the nature of where demand is. You know, if you trade in breakout strategies, then fine. If you, you know, you can trade a breakout of a level if you want to, right? That's up to you. But I'd never be a breakout breakout trader ever 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 you couldn't pay me enough to be a breakout trader i don't care if it's a profitable strategy or a supposed profitable strategy if it was then everybody would be doing it right but it really isn't um plus the guys as well we know about stop hunts and uh, and the like and uh, how and capture pain relief and how breakout traders get caught and how we uh, take advantage of those strategies right we are uh, we take the other side of those uh, losing traders so from that perspective um you know uh, when it comes to buying the dollar yes i'm a buyer of the dollar I have been for you know uh for for a good you know 11 12 months you can go back through the uh, weekly analysis videos and uh, double check if you want um but for me i'm looking for a pullback now there is demand here i don't like this demand zone i really don't um uh, I, I hesitate to draw it like that. I'm not going to draw it like that. I'm going to wait really for prices to again to come down because there is demand from this, you know, this move there and there. But um, from the perspective of uh, looking at that as a demand zone, no, I'm not going to. I'm not going to bother with that. I'm probably just more going to look for again any kind of pullback into that 97 area would be a nice uh, confluence. Right, so we're not trading the dollar index, we're just looking at confluences. So if you're buying the dollar and you see prices come down here and you see some positive price action to the upside, and um, you know, uh, the, for example, you want to be a buyer of the, the dollar yen or the dollar Swiss or the dollar CAD, for example, you're waiting for you know the the, the confluence in um, on those charts as well to align um, with the dollar index. You don't have to, but it's it's always decent confluence. Um, if you are looking to short the dollar and buy the rumor, uh, sell the fact because uh, there are times, uh, well, the, the market is already priced in a 0 0.25 basis point hike, right? That's pretty much it. There's no surprises. There's no um, 
I say uh, 0.25 basis point, but a 25 basis point or a 0.25% uh, increase. The market has already priced that in from, you know, from months ago. Um, so if you are buying on the, the fact, um, I'm not saying that prices can't go higher because of course they can, but, but if, you know, and I'm not here to predict, nobody knows, no one knows what's gonna happen, you know, when they hire crates, but whatever does happen, if it's a pullback, then brilliant, I'm looking for a pullback and looking to buy. If it goes higher, then I'll still wait for a pullback in a demand zone to buy. So it's just, you know, I'm not trying to buy at, at, at a high, it doesn't make any sense. You know, it's um, it's uh, trading suicide, right, to buy at highs constantly buy at highs so just wait for pullbacks for me anyway um, and that's my bias if you are looking to sell the dollar for whatever reason if you think there's going to be doom and gloom in the, U the US economy uh, coming up and there probably might be right not necessarily in, in the short term but maybe in the medium to long term you know they're going to um, potentially there's talk about recession I can understand why I'm not saying that it's going to happen but if it does there are going to be moments when you can short the US uh, dollar and I think you know at the moment this may be an area of supply as we're in that area there we tend to draw supply from the last bullish candle open price to the high but just for um, uh, for uh, I guess uh, illustration purposes and just kind of keep the chart a bit cleaner um, join the demand the supply zone from here sorry and you can look for short trades if you're looking for short trades into um and again not not necessarily on the, on the dollar index but just uh, short trades on the uh, dollar yen dollar swiss aussie dollar etc if that aligns with a zone that you want to get short at and um again looking at the uh federal reserve again we've already covered this federal reserve set for lift off with 25 basis points hike with the economy growing strongly creating jobs in significant numbers and experiencing the fastest rate of uh rate of price inflation in 40 years not even the uncertainty and financial market volatility caused by Russia invasion of Ukraine will deter the Fed from hiking on Wednesday. We continue to look for six 25 basis points hike this year and two more in 2023. So again, the market is very bullish. The banks are bullish. And uh, again, if they're, they're bullish because of the fundamentals, not because of uh, Elliott Wave or, you know, Bollinger Bands or anything like that. We know the path of um, where you know where the path of least resistance is, and uh, you know so many people call themselves trend traders, but don't really understand why the market is trending in the medium to long term. We've been saying this for, like I said, for a whole year. We've been saying buy a dollar, buy a dollar, not financial advice or what I'm buying, and uh, it's really kind of planned out in the in the medium to long term. So with that being said, um, dollar for me is a continued buy, um, but for me where it is now not great i'm looking for a pullback of some sorts if prices do pull back um then to these types of levels then i'm looking for confluences on the you know other other dollar pairs anyways it's not about me um and what i'm doing so much uh, it's really about the uh, just understanding the reasons why the market moves and then making your choice as to what you want to be a buyer uh, of dollar or a seller of the dollar for example or not even trade the dollar um moving on to the dollar yen dollar yen again we'll be looking for pullbacks on the dollar yen just didn't get that pull back to that zone looking at last week i really wanted price to come down to that 1450 area unfortunately it didn't and prices just went off um without us uh or without me um but that just presents another opportunity right and i get another pullback into a demand zone right so demand yep didn't catch it this week but uh if it pulls back to that zone there for me that's where i really want to be a uh a buyer of that uh, dollar yen um, as far as supply goes we are heading up into uh, a zone that has um, you know 2014 sorry uh, January the 4th 2017 zone now I don't know how significant that is from a supply zone perspective because um, whatever drove prices lower around here is that going to be the same thing in 20 you know 22 that's going to drive prices down there. It might be profit taking for sure, but um, I don't know. I don't know about uh, about selling that. Um, some traders may want to do it do it in the short term. I'm not really one of those traders. Uh, I'll rather just uh, wait for pullbacks and continue to look for buying opportunities. Um, so yeah, fundamentally, I want to be a buyer of the uh, 
of the dollar. The Japanese yen does strengthen in, in risk off environments 100%, but at the end of the day, um, it, it does come down to um, it can come down to economics as well, as far as you know the fundamental analysis um, with regards to you know uh, uh, GDP. Um, inflation interest rates what the central bank monetary policy is and if uh, the Japanese and Bank of Japan are not hiking rates and the US dollar are then you should see something like this right and this is what's been happening over you know for for a very long time yeah again you can go back through my videos people say oh well this is hindsight bias go back through my videos over the past year I've been saying the same thing over and over and over again pretty much week in week out anyways if you do want to get short uh, you know there is the opportunity but I don't like that setup at all I'd rather prices prove that there is a uh, uh, a reason to short in the short term so a new freshly made supply zone and then for maybe some bad news on the dollar or you know some great news on the Japanese yen but for me my bias is to the upside on that dollar yen dollar Swiss I'm still in this trade got in from um, a couple weeks ago from this uh, this area here that was my uh, my buy trade on that candlestick um, and now it's played out right nice really nice swing trade um, prices are broken through that supply zone um, let me just clear up the chart a little bit again waiting for who's waiting for pullbacks to to come uh, if you were looking for brand new trades anyway there is a demand zone that's been created right here so any pullbacks to that zone there could be a decent buying opportunity demand and uh, yeah I think where we are there so at the moment prices are you know making higher highs any pullbacks into this zone I think is going to be a really nice area and uh, those of you who are in the group in a private mentoring group uh, will recognize this as a, uh, a nice uh, level CPR on the daily so uh, and if you do want to join the uh, the mentoring group we are opening um, enrollment starts on the 28th of March and it'd be for a limited time maybe about five six seven days uh, for the opportunity I know many of you have been uh, uh, direct messaging me and asking when um, enrollment starts 28th of March 2022 15 days from now or from the recording of this uh, of this video so uh, check back on that date and uh, enrollment will be open and again it will be for a limited um, uh, time only so uh, if you do we're going to take your chance to uh, be um, mentored by me then um, that is your opportunity so uh, yeah getting back to the charts it's really just buy trades for me um, on this on this currency pair um, the Swiss franc is seen as very expensive so pullbacks all the way if you are looking for a sell trade then um, and buying the uh, the Swiss franc over the dollar I don't know why you would but um, actually you could, you could do it in a risk off scenario of course but currently I don't think um, uh, I don't think the uh, Swiss franc is going to strengthen too much or, or you know strengthen over the dollar too much anyways and it could of course but if you do want to this week get short that's a decent shorting opportunity but just understand that the more times the level is touched the more uh, the weaker that level becomes so you probably will expect maybe a bit of a pullback and then prices to kind of push through that area there because it's no longer really a bargain it was a bargain here at this price it was a bargain here at this price even a bargain at that price for the uh, for the Swiss franc but the more times uh, price looks like a bargain the less it becomes a bargain right the analogy that I always use is uh, if you're if you're looking to buy a Ferrari and you can get one for you know for cheap you know the first time brilliant that's excellent right but then all of a sudden if it starts to you know uh, sell uh, often at that price and people start the more people start selling at that price it becomes less of a bargain right so um, the price becomes starts to become common so uh, that, that that's no longer cheap for the uh, for the Swiss franc if you're getting short anyways moving on to the um, what are we on next sorry the dollar cad right dollar cad again a bit of a harder trade to take uh, two strong currencies two central banks looking to high crates um, with the dollar and the US so uh, again a bit of a mixed um, uh, pair I'm not really looking to trade this but if you are prices did come up to this fresh area of supply and uh, it did sell off and now we've also created an area of an extra area of demand which needs to be 
uh, drawn from here. So we've got quite a wide zone. And again, when you've got a wide zone of demand or supply, then the best thing to do is, or one of the things you can do, just one of the things you can do is really break down that zone and look for supply and demand. Sorry, support and resistance within that area. All right, so uh, where are we at now? Uh, da, 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 sorry, here we are. So within that large area of demand, right, because prices have made a new high, there's definitely demand there. Strongest area of demand would be somewhere around here. You can look for areas in there, or you can look for, go down to maybe a lower time frame like the hourly and look for, um, look for trades, sorry more fingers and thumbs today uh, support and resistance zones within that area of demand right so there that would be a nice zone to look for a buy trade if you think that the dollar is a bargain down here against the Canadian dollar or whether you think you know you want to be a buyer at a Canadian dollar then you're looking at supply zones on the higher time frame and zoom down into lower time frames uh, for for your entry um, yeah so that's pretty much it I think this, this was a really nice area nice technical trade but not necessarily the best um, uh, pair to trade. I think if I'm looking to trade this short, I think I'm gonna have to wait for uh, prices to come above that supply zone before looking at short trades on a stop hunt. Moving on to the New Zealand dollar, US dollar, and again, um, two strong currencies or appreciating currencies and uh, prices to come up fresh into this uh, supply zone, spike the high, um, probably took out a lot of stops above that market high and then uh, decided to go on its way again you've got two um, uh, central banks looking to high crates um, I'm a buyer of the New Zealand dollar but just not against the uh, the uh, the US dollar but uh, if you are looking for short trades now is a decent area if you're looking for buy trades again I think this uh, 67 um, where is it 67 0 0.6775 the start of this demand zone might be decent for a long trade but I'm really not interested in this uh, currency pair at all uh, fundamentally which means I'm not interested in it technically moving on to the pound dollar and last week's analysis still on here um, I was saying that the path of least resistance last week is to the downside if I was going to be a buyer of one or the other saying that you know prices should want to probably go to the downside and that's pretty much what happened you know again you've got two central banks that are looking to high crates uh, at the same time um, and again I'm a buyer of the British pound but just not against uh, the, the, the US dollar and so what we're seeing right now is uh, the dollar strengthen against the two out of the two uh, supply zones if you are looking for a um, a sell trade and uh, trying to sell the uh, uh, the pound against the dollar and buy the dollar against the pound then that's going to be the first area to look for and I think technically I think that's actually quite decent um, I do like that top zone there but from the perspective of um, uh, the pair I don't like it at all um, what have we got uh, there's another area probably around here as well that's decent for a, uh, a potential short but um, again I'm not really looking to trade this pair uh, again, if you're looking to buy the, the, the British pound zooming out I guess you've got a uh, an area from 2020 uh, nearly about a year and a half, nearly two years ago, you've got some demand there. And uh, yeah, prices are coming down into that, that demand zone, but I'd probably rather wait for proof of value for prices to really kind of go higher and prove that there are, there is a demand at this zone and then wait for a pullback into that zone before looking at any kind of long trades, whether you want to call it a double bottom um, is up to you, but uh, it's that's really where I'd be looking for uh, any buyers but I'm not looking to trade this pair anyway but looking at the pound the pound um, you know one of the reasons why I'm a buyer of the pound not against the dollar but against some other weak currencies would be because the UK GDP shows little sign of Omicron and it's increasingly clear that the UK economy is unlikely to see much if any lasting damage from Omicron but while the jury is out on whether the UK is now headed for a recession and uh, if so, how severe growing inflation pressures will make it hard for uh, consumer spending to avoid a downturn late, later this year. So um, the GDP uh, figures shows very little lasting damage. 
all right so um it was it was decent right so having declined by only 0.2 percent in december that means that activity levels are back slightly above pre-virus levels so there is um there is uh, some positivity in it, at least the short term but again in the medium to long term later this year there could be a potential slowdown as i think the uk are being more affected by the um the war in in, in russia uh, potentially so let's see what happens there but for now i'm a buyer of the uh, the, the the pound but again against uh, other currencies not against the dollar moving on to the euro dollar euro dollar and um so yeah, with the euro dollar, unfortunately, uh, say unfortunately for the euro, um, unfortunately for anyone who's been paying attention, uh, you know there was um, there was a bit of a sell trade here on Oanda. I think it's uh, the data is slightly different um, to. Uh, uh, I think it was uh, what's the uh, broker called again? FXCM and FXCM. I think this, there was a bit of a supply zone here, which allowed for a, p a potential short. I didn't get involved in this because there were other criteria that I wanted to get in look for. But from this uh, Oanda chart, anyways, you would have had to have looked for a higher level in order for to, for there to be a uh, a short trade um, from a from a demand zone perspective. If you are looking to buy the euro, there is uh, an opportunity to buy the euro uh, anywhere from now, right? looking for buy trades. Uh, why would you want to buy the euro in the face of um, uh, you know uh, the uh, against the dollar anyway um, uh, is is uh, it's a tough one but um, we do have some euro news and the ECB moves cautiously with normalization so the European Central Bank just announced how it will reduce the QE in the coming months net asset purchases will now be brought down to 20 billion per month in June rather than in October so they brought that forward uh, in light of stag of the stagflation risk and high uncertainty the decision gives the central bank maximum flexibility and keeps the uh, option open for a rate hike before the year ends so they are still lagging behind but they are making positive steps um, to potentially look to appreciate their currency because um, inflation works if prices uh, the euro is devaluing it pushes inflation higher um, and uh, a higher reading of inflation means that what the central bank needs to do actually is try to appreciate their currency the the european central bank need um uh, the euro to appreciate and go higher to cause inflation to come down so with that being said um you can see that they're making steps but uh again it depends on whether the market believes it i think there is going to be a definite time to buy the euro not really against the us dollar but i'm looking uh closely at the euro and if they start to recover economically and the um and the the, the Russia Ukraine um, conflict uh, starts to ease, or there's a resolution, then I do think that euro will be a, uh, a buy. Again, not really against the dollar, but against other currency pairs. So, buying opportunity there, selling opportunity there. As I said, as I've been saying, path of resistance at the moment is to the downside, and so as long as the Russia Ukraine tensions keep going. The, uh, the dollar is going to be the stronger out of the two. Um, moving on towards the dollar, uh, Australian dollar, US dollar, and again, two currencies. I would probably say that the US dollar should have the uh, the edge over the um, the Australian dollar, but the Australian dollar has been strong due to commodity prices rising um, around the world, and that's really helped the strength of the uh, Australian dollar. Plus, geographically, the uh, Australia are very far removed from um, the tensions and the uh, Ukraine and Russia um, tensions and, and war that's going on. So with that being said, um, th this pair isn't a pair I'm really looking to trade, but if you are, um, then you're looking for uh, sell trades there and potentially some buy trades. You know, last week prices did come down into that demand zone, right? And then there was a decent amount of pips to the upside, uh, potentially if you zoom down into like the lower time frames and manage to you know get in on you know somewhere around here. But um, but this pair again isn't something that I'm looking to trade. Um, the, in a straight fight, the US uh, dollar should win, uh, should appreciate over the Australian dollar, especially from a monetary policy perspective. But um, 
again, it's, it's a harder, harder trade, a harder pair to trade uh, fundamentally. So, and risk sentiment wise, I'm not really looking to take that trade at all, or even look at that pair. And then we've got the Australian dollar, Japanese yen. And again, even though we are in a risk off environment, um, money has been flowing into the commodity currencies. Um, so with that being said, all right, uh, there are, again, there is a demand zone right here and by the way if you're you know scratching your head and thinking well you know this is what sh you know one thing should happen over another i've created several videos on youtube really kind of explaining um uh this 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 concept of uh of um of risk uh, sentiment not always being just you know um risk off means buy the yen and the swiss franc and and sell commodity currencies and risk on means uh buy commodity currencies and sell uh, risk off or typical safe haven currencies right there are nuances there are nuances and if you go back through the last maybe couple of videos that i've done on fundamentals and mastering fundamentals um i talk about this so anyone who's paying attention would have known from last week um that you know the the australian dollar was probably more of a buy um so yeah pullback has created a nice demand zone um yes the japanese yen does do well typically but not but in this in this environment and in the, what's happening now and the nuance of the war and and where it is i think um and the fact that commodity prices are rising um which is helping the australian dollar i think uh for me i'm, I'm really a buyer of the uh, of the australian dollar over the japanese yen so any pullbacks into any of these zones for me is uh is a buy also from a monetary policy perspective the australian dollar um, and the rba the rba are looking to hike rates at some point this year probably maybe the second half rather than any time uh soon but again it's buying the rumor right that's you know you have to buy the rumor from now because by the time they do hike um and if they do hike and things work out then that would be probably too late to to, to buy you missed out on really the move um so finally gold and gold pulling back uh, reached the all-time highs blasted through that supply zone and as i always keep saying as well that you know there's no supply zone or demand zone or technical analysis level that's going to you know stand in the way of you know good fundamentals and risk sentiment but we have pulled back profit taking going on here so anyone who missed out on the move if prices do come down to this demand zone here there's a nice buying opportunity yeah the market can go higher it just doesn't move in a straight line so let's see what happens um from now if you are looking to buy gold and gold um again gold dealers swamped by demand as war creates inflation scares so there are several things going on there's war going on inflation scares uncertainties of gold flirts with levels reached during covid 19 pandemic right retail investors are snapping up the metal across the globe so gold is playing its age-old role as a safe haven in times of wars and crisis and people all over the world are piling in so russia's invasion of ukraine has sent price of everything from oil and gas to wheat and metal skyrocket skyrocketing sparking inflation fears and threatening global growth that's driving retail investors everywhere from vienna to and singapore to new york to the safety of gold which spiked uh two thousand and seventy dollars and forty four cents an ounce close to the record reached uh during the pandemic and um again it wasn't hard to tell why this was uh why this was happening um so uh so yeah if you were a buyer of gold you know well done to you well done um now, if you do want to be a buyer of gold, then you're really looking at, you know, pullbacks. This is going to be an expensive area at the moment. This is definitely the bargain area. So, um, you know, you don't really want to be buying at highs. So if prices can pull back a little bit more, a bit more patience, let's see what happens. And then that could be a, a buying opportunity. If inflation fears start to subside and the, 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 the war in Ukraine starts to subside as well, then that actually is going to be a really nice sell trade on gold, I think. Um, but again, just watching inflation um, and uh, commodity prices uh, start to come down. I think gold will start to come down, but who knows? No one can predict the future and let's see what happens uh, with that. Anyways, guys, that's it for this week. I uh, hope you enjoyed the analysis and uh, I hope you have a great trading week and speak to you all soon. Take care.